So you guys want to know exactly how to shoot and edit professional looking pictures using just your smartphone. Well, you're in luck because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that to take these pictures. Yes, they've all been taken with the phone. So I'm gonna show you how to edit these pictures right there on your phone. We're gonna be using a few tips and tricks and bonus tricks with third-party apps to make these pictures the next level of how good they can be. So it doesn't really matter which phone you're using because these tricks can be applied across all phones. So make sure you watch the entire video because these trips can really help you improve your smartphone photography and help you create really sick pictures using just your phone, which is awesome. So let's get started. All right, so the purpose of this video is not to show you how to shoot the pictures themselves, how to compose and where to take the pictures from, which angles to use, but I'm gonna give you a few advices on what works with smartphone photography as opposed to regular photography. So I'm gonna give you a few tips like where to position it, how to get the right focus, and moving your portrait subjects. So let's get started. First tip, use sunlight. Sunlight is your best friend for any photography, but with smartphone small sensor, it's very useful. Second, use the blur effect by bringing the subject closer to the camera lens. Third, if you're shooting a portrait, move your subject around to find the perfect balance of light and colors. And the last tip is gonna be use the right lens for the right photo, ultra wide versus tele. So let's get started. Uh, the app I'm using is Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. You can use any app, the concept is the same. The first picture we're gonna start with is a picture I took through my window of this car through trees, very nice frame. So it's a five time zoom. So what we're gonna do is the basic controls where we're looking at the contrast, the highlights, and the shadows. So I'm gonna play around with the exposure a little bit because I want it to be slightly darker uh, for the vibe. Then we're gonna go into the curves. We're gonna bring down the shadows, bring up the highlights, make an S-curve sort of thing, and bring up that edge there. That adds the fade look to it, as you guys can see there. Next, we're gonna go into the hue saturation slider area where we're gonna move the hues of the greens to the left to create that yellowish look, and we're reducing the saturation to make it a little bit dramatic. Overall, what we're gonna do is basically go through all these colors to see which ones are appealing to us. So for my taste, it would be a little bit different than yours, but this is just what I'm going with here. I desaturated the majority of the colors. Next, we're moving up the textures and the clarity because I want this to pop out at you and the image will look very, very stylish. So we're gonna add a bit of dehazing as well so we had more punch and contrast. And then we're gonna add a bit of vignetting to bring the focus to the center a little bit more. So moving the midpoint and all of that is still preferential. This is the secret ingredient. Go to your split toning under the effects and add a yellowish hue to the highlights specifically. This adds that brownish, grungy look to the image. So I think this looks very stylized. You could just leave it here, but we're gonna add a little bit more extra and we're gonna make it punch just a little bit more for the car itself. So you can go into selective edits here and you can add a brush and basically paint over the car because that's where we wanna add the extra effects. So we're gonna come in to our clarity and, and our uh, texture module, add more clarity, add a little bit more texture a little bit of that makes a huge difference and you guys can see the before and the after that looks really sick. That's the first image and boom. For the next one, I'm gonna show you how to make a really hipster image in just one minute. So we're gonna do our basic edits like before. Add a fade, this is very important for hipster images. Add a fade. The key is, the secret is moving the blues to the left. So the adding a teal look to it, teal and orange it's called, is the best way to get a hipster image. So you move your trees, the green colors to yellows and that's it. Reduce saturation, add vibrance, go back to your colors. Make sure you remove all other colors that are distracting. Always keep two colors because that's how you bring your audience's attention the most. And we're gonna play around with this luminance as well for the blues a little bit later. So you can see the before and after already looks a little bit hipster. Check the black and white to see where you can add more clarity. So here I can, so I'm gonna add more texture, more clarity, and then we're gonna add a little bit of dehaze to make the clouds pop a little bit more. Slight vignette and so far so good, but we're gonna go back to our basic edits and, and increase the, the shadows a little bit more because we want the statue's face to look better. That's the before and after. Go back to your colors and then reduce luminance a little bit to add that darkish look to the clouds. And look at that, that's really cool, really hipster, very fast. That's the final image. And that looks very good to me. It's a very Instagram hipster image and that's easy tutorial. Uh, this is a picture I just took that was really terrible. I didn't like the picture. I just wanted to show off my latte art. That was the first time I was doing it. But then I realized that I can actually save this image even though it's really trashy by doing selective edits. So we're gonna take a circle, draw a selective circle mask around the coffee itself. And we're gonna invert the mask by clicking that button. So it's selecting everything except the coffee itself. So whatever edits I do now is gonna apply just to the red selected portion. So I'm gonna go to the basic exposure settings and reduce all of the light going onto the table 
and just focus on the coffee itself. So this is basically just removing everything that shows on the table, right? So that's the look I'm going for right there. Coffee in the middle, everything else is dark, right? So selecting that, we're good to go already. That's a good start. Go back to the basic edits and increase the exposure and contrast a little bit, had highlights a little bit more, more shadows. So we're trying to make the coffee pop out a little bit more. So if you can see here, the adding the fade doesn't look good. So we remove that. Uh, now we're going to zoom in and you can see those highlights on the cup where the light was reflecting off of. We need to get rid of that. That's not very difficult to do if you use Lightroom. So you can go into, so you can go into your healing brush tool and just paint over these parts and pretty much just get rid of them. And then you have this really artsy, abstract look to your image that would have failed if you hadn't done this. So this looks really good to me if you're just trying to show off something very specific in the image. And that's what it finally looks like. It looks really cool. So this was something very similar I did with this image as well. So remember, I talked about that bonus app that's called Lens Distortions. We're going to jump in, grab this image really quick, which we want to edit. And this app basically allows you to add light hits and anything you want to make it look professional. So for the sake of this picture, we're going to add uh, a lens flare. Uh, a light hit to the lens and you have very many options to select from but for this one we're gonna go for the coolish tone for the light hit and you have to figure out you can basically move this around anywhere you want you have to figure out where it looks realistic so in my case you can see that's the light source per se and then you can move it around to where the sun really was for me it was the top right corner that's where i'm gonna place it that looks really good to me and then we're gonna move on to the opacity and we're gonna reduce it slightly to make it look a little bit more realistic so now we have a more realistic looking opacity you can add a different layer of something to add on for me the shimmers look really good so this is the first shimmer type but this doesn't make sense in this picture so we're gonna go for the bokeh look with the shimmer which is the last one so you guys can see now we have that out of focus element thing in the foreground, which looks very professional to me, where you can move it around to make it look a lot more realistic. So we're gonna move it there, opacity reduce a little bit and save. Now we import it back into Lightroom and you go through your basic stuff again, contrast, highlights, shadows. This is just the basic layer on top. Add a fade, move the colors to the hipster look that I talked about. And we're gonna apply the split tone, adding a bluish tint to the shadows. And then we get this look image, which looks really nice to me. You can have a different taste, but for me, this looks pretty good. And I'm happy with that. Next, we're going with indoor portraits. You can't be very grungy with portraits because it's going to have weird elements on the face. So we're going to go through the basic settings to make it a little bit more hdr -y, as you guys can see I did there. Uh, we increased the saturation a little bit because I want it to pop. And we're going to add a fade as well. The trick to the fade is right there. I've showed you this three, four times before already. Raise the left side up a little bit. That adds a fade. So where I really want to customize the image would be in the colors itself. So I have a look in mind already. So we're going to move the blues again to the left. We're going to move the greens to the left again. And we're basically going to look at what colors suit the face a little bit more. That's why I'm skipping through this part because this is very personal preference. I'm also reducing the blues saturation a little bit because I want to make a dual tone. So I want it to pop out at me a little bit more. So the concepts apply across all boards, even the split edits where I'm adding yellows to the highlights and blues or a teal-ish tone to the shadows. This adds a color contrast rather than a regular light contrast as well. So you want to create separation between your subject and the way the person looks at the image. So that's what we're doing here and before and after. And I think that looks like a very hipster-ish image already. We're gonna add a little bit more clarity there because we want him to pop out more, a little bit more texture and slightly more vignette -y. And look at the before and after. That looks like a very hipster image to me. Looks very cool and Instagram worthy and has that mood to it. I really like how that looks as opposed to a regular image. Really quick, I'm gonna show you how I edited this picture that was on our Instagram. Make sure you follow us there. So we're gonna go through the basic edits. Obviously you wanna add more contrast than this one. You wanna make it look like really poppy. This was the only raw image I took. So same thing, moving the blue hues to the left, moving the yellows all the way to the left. So basically here we have not that much color, but we're gonna reduce saturation, add vibrance, and then remove all other distracting colors from here. So we're gonna go, just in case there's a spill, reduce saturation on everything. And then now we have just that bluish tint to it and a greenish hue to it. So we're gonna add more texture, more clarity for building shots. It always looks great. Dehaze a little bit more to make those clouds pop. Then we're gonna go to our basic controls, add more contrast. I wanna add a fade to this as well. So we're gonna go through these settings, go to the curves, add an S curve like always, add a fade. And then now that I look at it, I think we can add more shadows as well. So we're gonna go back to our curves, bring down the shadows more to make it like really punchy. And now when you look at this picture, the before and after, it just looks a lot cooler when you've edited it that way. With that punchy look in your face, really sick building shot. Fine art, sort of. So basically these are the basic tricks 
to sum up, we just want to focus on using the right lens and then getting the best out of the camera that's possible. If you're shooting raw, it's going to be a lot easier to edit, but if you're doing JPEG, which most of these images are, you can still do this using Lightroom. So here I'm just doing the split toning and adding that warm look to the highlights like I told you about. It really looks good and that just works out to add that warm feeling. Same for portraits, it works the same way. If you want a hipster look, you do the basic edits where it looks punchy enough but not crushing the blacks and then you move to the colors and saturate them in a way that makes it very hipster and very appealing to look at. So it's always the opposite colors, teal and orange, opposite sides of the spectrum. Looks great. So that's it for now, guys. If that was beneficial to you, make sure you hit that like button so we know you like this kind of content and we'll do more of this in the future. This could be just part one in the series for tutorials that we make. So make sure you guys subscribe for more videos just like this. And we'll see you again in the next video.